Hi, I'm Dave Mars with Conservation Tips. You know, heating your water represents about 15% of your household's energy consumption. Now that may mean you're pouring a fair amount of money right down the drain. So today on Tips, we're going to show you how to maximize your water heating efficiency. Now basically, there's two types of water heaters you can purchase, an electric one or a natural gas propane one. Today we're going to talk about the natural gas unit. Now in the olden days, they only put a very little amount of insulation between it and it was fiberglass. It didn't insulate very well. Uh, all the newer tanks basically replace that fiberglass with some nice spray foam and much higher R value and perform a lot better for you. Now, if your water heater is located in a heated space, the insulation that comes with the unit may be, be more than adequate. But if the water heater happens to be in a colder spot, like in a closet off a garage or in a garage or in a cold area, you may want to add an extra jacket like this. They come in a variety of thicknesses. They've been on the hardware shelves for many years, come with complete instructions. And if you're cramped for space, you can use this aluminized bubble pack because it'll fit in real nicely and also help you save some money. Now another part of the water here that may need some insulating is the pipes coming out of it. Um, they can emanate heat all day long, so let's keep that heat in the, inside the water there and you can do it very readily with some pipe insulation. Now it comes in three quarter inch or half inch diameter and you have to check the diameters of the pipes come out of the water heater so you buy the right one. It's fairly easy to install, it just slides over the pipe like this and then you're done. Now on the cold water side, you want to do about five feet of it, and on the hot water side, as much as you can cover it, and it'll pay off. It pays off twice, saves you energy, it also saves you water, and having to run it so long to get that hot water to your faucet. So when insulating your pipes, make sure you keep the foam off of this draft hood right here, because it can get a little warm. This is where the gases come out after you, you know, burn the fuel down below to heat the, the water. This is where your bad gases come out, and this draft hood right here is necessary for proper release of those bad fumes. So don't pile anything up on top of here, particularly. Now, this is what's called your pressure relief valve, and it's designed to do what it says. It's going to relieve the pressure. If this thing decides to overheat for some reason, the hot water is going to spew out here because there's an apparatus in here that's temperature sensitive, and it will do that for, for your safety. Sometimes, though, we can get a little calcium built up in here, and sometimes you might have to just tap this, or you may have to pull this lever and flush them out of there because it can create a leak for you that can be going, you know, unless you look at it for a very long time, it's going to cost you money in wasted energy and wasted water. Well, now we're down at the business end of the water heater, and uh, here's our pressure relief uh, pipe coming down. It's about the right height here, so it won't spray if it happens to, to blow. We have a drain valve right here, and here we have our control for our flame. And this is how we do the temperature, etc. Now, these, the gas is, of course, fed to the burner that's underneath the tank, and it heats the, there's a dome, it's, it's an inner tank, of course, and there's a dome in there, and the, that's what heats the water. And we have a little bit of a heat pattern right here, because some of the heat escapes underneath there. If you find yours being a much darker situation, maybe looks more burned, you may want to have somebody come and check, make sure that's operating correctly. And uh, one thing that we can do at this juncture here is that periodically we want to flush this tank out because sediment can build up and it can insulate the flame from the water. So uh, you can flush it out. That's pretty easy to do, and I'll show you how. As on top, you want to keep that clear. We want to keep the bottom clear also of debris from building up. So we want to get the oxygen in the flame so we get complete combustion and higher efficiency that way. Now over time, minerals can deposit out of the water and end up at the bottom of the tank and they kind of form a layer where they can insulate the flames from heating your water. So periodically you want to flush this out of there and that'll help with your efficiency. Now it's easy enough to do. You've got to have a few things in line though. First you want to turn the water heater temperature off so the flame doesn't come on while we're doing this. Then you want to go ahead and shut the cold water off. Then you want to go to your bathroom and open up a hot water uh, faucet. And then we're going to come down here to this drain valve right here, and it's sort of nice if you have a hose or something uh, so that you can run this to a floor drain so it's not all over the place. Luckily in this situation we have a floor drain right here, and then what you do is you just open up your drain, get some water coming out, and uh, we're going to have a tank of drain about, oh, about a third of the way, a fourth of the way, and then what we're going to do is we're going to turn the cold water on real fast so it kind of agitates the uh, minerals at the bottom of the tank and you might be able to see them coming out this uh, hose then and you know you're doing a good job. Now you want to do that maybe a couple of times and as the water comes out of your hose nice and clean, well you've done about the, about the best cleaning as you can at that time. Now, ideally you'd want to do this maybe once a year so that any sludge you might build up you can take care of it that way. So after you drain the tank about a third or half of the way you want to turn the cold water on, just get that 
agitation going so we can kick up some of that debris off the bottom get it suspended and drain some more water out and you want to drain it till you see this running fairly clear and then basically you want to reverse what you've done you want to shut the the uh, water off down here at the drain you want to go ahead and open up the cold water supply so that the tank fills up and then you go to your hot water faucet and shut it off once the air is out of the line and then you can come back here and set your temperature after you secured the water heater then you want to get the air out of the hot water lines. So that just means running some water through until you get the, the air out of it. Then the next thing you might try to do after the water heats up again in the uh, tank is you notice that there's not an exact temperature guide on that thermostat, so you really don't know what the temperature of the water is. We want to stay between 115 and 125 degrees. That's going to be dependent on you know, what kind of hot water usage your family goes through. A uh, good way to find out exactly what the temperature is is to get a meat thermometer like this, fill the glass with hot water from the tap, and see what it's running. You may save a lot of money just turning it down a few degrees. Now, if you haven't taken a look at water heater and you go down there and find out that there's some major leaking going on at the bottom, it's probably a good time to think about replacing it. Now, the unit we looked at today is about a 60% efficient unit, and you can get new water heaters up to about 90% efficient, especially some Energy Star ones. Look for that label, of course. Now, that'll help you save money overall with your water bills, and if you follow the tips that we went through today, you even save some more money. So, this is Dave Mars with Conservation Tips, and Hey, let's save some energy today. See you soon.